thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Ejim Giros. The website is rickyradio.com. We are going to be talking today about the Aquarian Age and the extraterrestrials. In our past lectures, we did mention Gnostic anthropology, and now we are going to establish a connection with Gnostic cosmology. Gnostic anthropology is the study of man from a Gnostic point of view, and cosmology is the study of the cosmos, the study of the universe, and from a Gnostic point of view also. It's important to understand that cosmology, Gnostic cosmology and Gnostic anthropology, they have a perfect connection, interrelationship, because we say that the cosmos is a perfect representation of a human being. You know, at the entrance of the Temple of Delphi in ancient Greece, there was a sentence at the door that said, O oh man, woman, know yourself and you will know the gods and the universe. The gods represent angels, archangels, seraphims, thrones, you know, all these uh, superior beings mentioned in the Bible and all sacred books. So in a few words, the galaxy, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is a perfect representation of our human organism. So there is a connection between every atomic particle and every planet within the galaxy. Let's try to imagine and visualize that perspective, that possibility. There is also a strong connection with Gnostic astrology and the relationship with astronomy. Astronomy studies the universe considering the planets as a mass, you know, uh, with rocks, mountains, oceans, rivers, vegetation, but without given any importance to the possibility of cosmic intelligence within the planet. But in the case of Gnostic astrology, we say that every planet is alive, is the physical body of a gigantic superior individual. The Bible calls them the Elohim or the Cosmo creators, superior beings, archangels that have the power to create planets to build planets, solar systems, constellations, and even galaxies. Well, is that possible? Open up our senses, open up our imagination, our inspiration, our emotional intelligence, and try to immerse within all these possibilities that according to Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology regarding Gnosticism, Gnosis, we accept them, you know, as a tremendous reality that will give us answers about the purpose of life. Do we know, for example, that there is life in the sun? Well, scientists wouldn't say that. You know, for them, the sun is a fireball. But Gnostic cosmology says, no, it's not a fireball, it's a planet. It's a solid planet, because if it wasn't solid, it wouldn't be able to hold the entire solar system connected, hooked with it. A fireball wouldn't have the energy, the power to hold the heavy mass of many planets. Same thing with the entire galaxy. Everything is solid. All stars are solid. Now, our solar system including our planet Earth, travels within the galaxy. The same way our blood travels within the human organism, our solar system also travels and goes within the zodiac belt, which is the same 12 signs of astrology of the zodiac, you know, and number 12 is also a very interesting number, because if you, if you remember the seven tribes of Israel in the Bible, or the Jewish books, or the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, you know, twelve represent the apostolate. Now, 
you see, we have entered in February 1962. All astronomers here on Earth, you know, verified scientifically that all planets were lining up with our own sun. Was it something incredible to be watched? Of course it was. Incredible. That happens every so many thousands of years. You know, that repeated. According to Gnostic cosmology, every many, many thousands of years and represent the entrance within the Aquarian constellation. We left the Pisces constellation, which at the time of Jesus Christ, this is why the sim symbology of the Christians, when they were persecuted by the Romans in their catacombs, you could see two fishes intertwined, you know, which is the symbol of Pisces. They also say that Jesus Christ was under the sign of Pisces. He was on Capricorn. Many people believe that he was born December 24th, which is not true. He was also connected with the sign of Pisces. Well, let's come back into Gnostic cosmology, the relationship with Gnostic anthropology. So when we enter this incredible constellation of Aquarius, many, many changes are experienced already and they will continue being experienced. For example, within the next few years, we are going to enter into a part of the galaxy where there are many suns interconnected. So we will see a daylight for many, many years. And the voltage will be so intense that most of us won't be able to tolerate that, you know, strong electricity, magnetic field irradiating from those stars. So only people who have learned to transform themselves will be able to be part of it. And this is what we call a golden age. We are going to experience a golden age. But can we all part of the golden age? The answer is yes, with one condition. We have to change. That means improving ourselves, not diminishing what we are. Improving ourselves means transform, develop our potential, which is sleeping within ourselves. Remember that we are a perfect replica of the galaxy. So all superior beings also live within ourselves. We have the potential to transform, to ascend, to become, you see, angels. An angel is an individual with 12 senses. Why do we have only five? What about archangels? They have more than 12 senses. You know, angels are people who have transformed their human organism by, by changing, by improving the quality of functioning of the same organism. For example, you know, every superior being, higher than we are, they have awakened their endocrine system. We do have seven endocrine glands. Those seven endocrine glands are connected with the seven planets, basic planets of the solar system that correspond to the seven days of the week. Are we aware of that? It's important to understand that, you know. Maybe in the future we'll be able to give you more and more information and maybe we're also going to recommend you to recommend you, you know, some Gnostic books where you can clarify many of our, you know, ideas already being exposed to you. So Samaela Umbeor is the founder of Gnostic Anthropology on Earth. And this individual is a very high spiritual individual who descended from higher degrees of consciousness into our planet Earth, reincarnated to help us. And he is the leader of the Gnostic anthropology, but also all masters of founders of all religions are also connected with Gnostic anthropology and Gnosticism. So, Samaila Onveor is an individual who had the capability 
to uh, study the universe, to study us, and to unveil all the mysteries of creation and all the mysteries of the human organism and the relationship with the cosmos. So we could say then angels, you know, have been able to awaken the fire, the electricity within our organism. So if we compare them with us, we are a tiny little spark that lives in our heart. When you transform into a superior being, into a master or an angel, you transform the spark into a flame connected with the seven endocrine glands. All endocrine glands, the seven endocrine glands, you see, represent. The Bible speaks in the book of Leviticus, you know, the seven churches of the apocalypse. Do you know that the seven churches of the apocalypse are within ourselves? They are the same chakras or connected with the chakras of Hinduism with yoga and also the seven endocrine glands. There is a strong interrelationship between them all. The problem is those seven churches of the apocalypse are in darkness because we are baby spirits. But if we grow up spiritually, we'll be able to transform the spark into a flame. And though all those seven churches will be illuminated, they will transform us into a flame. We won't be a spark any longer. Now, same thing happened with the galaxy. So when we are traveling within the space and enter within the Aquarian constellation, as we said, you know, there are many, many suns, many stars, pure fire coming from the sky, coming from the cosmic space into our Earth. So the electricity will be so high that the way we are today, we won't be able to tolerate that heat. But if we transform ourselves, if we awaken our consciousness, we, if we annihilate all our negativity, the Bible calls them the seven deadly sins, the ego, the inferior nature. If we transform them, we'll be able to adjust to the journey within the Aquarian constellation and we'll be able to be part of it. We'll be part of a golden age. So within the Aquarian constellation, many revolutions started already to happen. The year 1962, between 2 and 3 p.m., you know, New York time, that cosmic phenomenon happened. Now, after that, we have seen many changes on Earth, you know. We have seen many dictatorships that went down. It's like cosmic justice is already entering into action. All those military regimes in Latin America have been replaced by democracies. We, many, many wars, you know, even they have brought a lot of pain and suffering to us. Well, at the same time, they have brought some hope. We have learned a painful, painful lesson. We should learn to live in peace. You know, we don't like wars the way people used to glorify them too much. Instead of glorifying peace, we've been doing the opposite. So at the same time, the Aquarian age represents catastrophes. Listen to this carefully. The global catastrophes have happened on earth for many, many times. The Bible speaks about Sodom and Gomorrah that happened millions of years ago. And we connect that with Gnostic anthropology describing them as a human race of angelical beings that collapsed because they disobeyed cosmic law. So they are the same Adams and Eves that disobeyed divine law and they were destroyed, Sodom and Gomorrah. They used to live in what today is the Pacific Ocean. Millions of years later, another civilization called the Atlanteans 
And the Bible describes them like, you know, they are the flat. Well, that really happened. There was the Atlantic Ocean that didn't exist at that time. There was a continent there, and the continent collapsed in the middle of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, hurricanes, and suddenly, when the continent collapsed, water covered all that part, and water also purified in the middle of catastrophe that lasted for thousands of years. The survivors created our actual human race. And now, because we are making the same mistake, we gave too much importance to our inferior nation. We forgot the divinity. We forgot that we are spiritual beings. We forgot our inner reality. And, of course, we enter into a stage of degeneration. We are not evolving any longer. We enter into involution. The only way out is a psychological revolution that will conduct us into a, a physical revolution. We have to transform ourselves. Same thing is happening within the cosmos. You see? So we are entering into a part of the galaxy where there is a, a lot of light for thousands of years. But if there is no light within ourselves, we cannot be part of it. So we have to produce that global catastrophe within ourselves and at the same time to experience resurrection. We have to resurrect from our own ashes. So this is the end of our actual civilization. That's going to happen soon. I don't want to scare anybody, but we have to speak also with the truth because global warming is not just the invention of a group of radicals who are willing to take advantage of a political situation. Global warming is a reality, ladies and gentlemen. Politicians of the world, military, people. This is not a joke. This is a reality. And whatever happened before, it will happen to us again. Because we have transformed our poor planet Earth in a garbage trash. We contaminated everything out of irresponsibility, out of in unconsciousness, out of ego, me, 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 instead of caring about other people, instead of caring about our own planet, our collective homeland. What are we doing to ourselves? Isn't it time to be awakened? The problem is we don't listen to the signs of the times. You know, all these global catastrophes that are happening within our own planet have to be experienced within ourselves. We have to accept that we've been mistaken. We have to accept that we have to change. Evolution, involution, they are not good anymore for us because we've been evolving for millions of years and look at the result. We're a laughing matter even to ourselves. You see, involution is what we are already experiencing. We enter into a stage of degeneration. The only way out is to repent, to change, to correct our mistakes, to annihilate the ego, which are the same seven deadly sins of Christianity, and to transform it into the seven virtues. So in the middle of all this conflict, part of the you know, ruling of the planet Uranus, which is connected with revolutions, we've got the visit of people from other planets. You know, NASA had been trying to deny, you know, that for a long, long period of time, you know. Many witnesses of UFOs visiting us have been, you know, made a laughing matter then people don't believe in that anymore. People are very much skeptical. But you know, a scientist recently, a very respect, respected scientist mentioned that, a British scientist, you know, recently described that we have to be ready for the visit of extraterrestrial life into our planet. 
Well, but also he said that we have already too many problems, so maybe they're going to increase our problems. Well, the point is this. As we said, the entire solar system and the galaxy are a living, gigantic organism. So our own catastrophe is also affecting them. Our planet Earth is very, very ill, and we are transmitting that illness to the other planets. The situation is, you know, there is evidence, and I'm going to mention that kind of evidence regarding visitors from other planets. When we say that all nature is alive, every atomic particle is alive, so every planet is alive, and there is life in every planet. Maybe life is not cellular the way it is in our planet, but it could be also molecular or atomic or even electronic. You know, the habitants of the sun are in a very high level of perfection we could say that they are electronic individuals, people made of fire, people made of light. They can tolerate, you know, this intensity of that, you know, powerful energy emerging from the interior of the sun. Our neighbors within our solar system, which are Venus and Mars, well, they are also here. So Milan Veor has described, you know, his own experiences with them both. He has said that the habitants from Venus are beautiful people. They are not monsters the way they've been described by many people. Beautiful people, superior than we are, and actually the humanity of Venus is an angelical humanity. This angelical humanity we described in a, in a past lecture you know, they have created paradise on their own planet. People walk on the streets, on their big cities, the way they would walk in a temple here on Earth. People who have true respect, true respect for Mother Nature and true respect for the divinity. So those people work only two hours a day. And when they need to solve a problem like buying food, they don't need to buy it because money doesn't exist. So they go really to a store where they can pick up their food. They need clothing. They go there without paying anything. Everybody is responsible. Everybody is conscious. Everybody is respectful and loving. So they need a car. They pick up their vehicles from a huge, gigantic parking lot. The keys are there and they use them. And those people concentrate mainly during those two hours of work. They concentrate in learning more about nature, about the universe, about cosmic laws, and the way to help us. Inferior people the way we are, because there are many planets where people are also inferior than we are. We could say evil humanities. But we are not really so good, even if we consider ourselves to be. But there are superior civilizations, like the people from Venus. What about Mars? You see, there were a few situations that happened in the past. Have you ever heard of the Marconi group, William Marconi? William Marconi is the Italian scientist that discovered radio telegraphy without wires. That man lived a hundred years ago. And during the time of Hitler, they wanted, Hitler wanted the Marconi group to work for him. But also the Italians, you know, uh, the Italian fascist regime wanted Marconi to be also part of his government. Uh, what about the Americans? What about the Russians? All of them wanted the Marconi Group to work for them, doing all kinds of scientific research. But the Marconi Group, disciples of William Marconi, escaped from Europe. And in the middle of the war, they ended in Brazil. In Brazil, they created 
an underground scientific building, a scientific laboratory, and they started sending signals into space, into the universe. This is a true story, you know. Narciso Genovese, one of the members, an Italian scientist, one of the members of the Marconi group, he described there were 98 scientists. He wrote a book called I've Been in Mars. You can see that book is written in Spanish language, maybe Italian also, in the, you know, in the internet. I have been in Mars. In Spanish, yo he estado en Marte. In Italian, sounds very similar. Well, this man was a scientist and also a professor of linguistic in a European university. And he joined the Marconi group in the middle of the Brazilian jungle. So after they started sending messages to space, they received answers. And Narciso Genovese, who knew how to understand all kinds of languages and sounds, he discovered, you know, the roots of this mysterious language from Martian scientists. Incredible, fantastic, yes, it is. But Mr. Narciso Genovese assures that whatever he wrote in his book is purely the truth. But also, Samuel Veor, the founder of our School of Gnostic Anthropology, he witnessed this experience. He said that also everything that Narciso Genovese told in his book, it is the truth. It doesn't matter if NASA or many scientific groups or governments or the military don't agree with that, but the truth is the truth. We cannot prove what we are saying, but we leave it up to you. Our mission is to share information and not to continue living in darkness. I have had a personal experience, you know, that was very exciting to me at the very beginning when I heard about Professor Narciso Genovese, the man who translated, you know, the language of the Martian scientists visiting our planet in the middle of the jungle of Brazil. Narciso Genovese, after all this situation happened, after so many years, the, Mar the Marconi group wasn't capable of continuing functioning. They were even, according to him, they were persecuted by secret services, you know, even the police of many countries were after, after them, you know, accusing them of many horrible, you know, illegal activities. So they disappeared and they were not organized any longer. I would even say they, were, they went underground. Narciso Genovese ended in living in Mexico. He was living in, you know, in the border with California, actually with San Diego, in the city of Tijuana. Tijuana lately has been considered a very dangerous place to live, you know, because of the drugs cartels fighting, you know, for territories and all that stuff, and a lot of killing, a lot of assassination. Well, I'm telling you, this is 2010. 15 years ago, when I heard about Narciso Genovese that he was in Tijuana, I decided to pay him a visit because some friends, some Mexican friends or people who lived in Mexico, in that part of the city, they had met Professor Narciso Genovese. So I traveled, you know, many, many times and I couldn't connect with those people, but finally one day I had the chance to sit down with one of my friends in Mexico with his family. And I was asking about Professor Narciso Genovese and he told me, Narciso Genovese has died. And he was very, very sad when he died. You know, he, he let, he allowed his hair to grow and he had a long beard. He looked like, you know, like a man living in the mountains, 
and and very very depressed. So when he told me that, you know, I was very impressed and surprised. And but allow me to tell you this because, you know, my serious perception of this situation made me go all the way to interview this individual and try to verify in real life if what he told in his book was fiction or just connected to reality. So I hope that you also feel the same way. I leave it up to you. Is this reality or fiction? Well, let's intuition give us our answer. You know, our instinct or our intuition or our emotional intelligence let those capabilities that we all carry within speak on our behalf. The situation is one day in the year 1965, December 1965, after they established the connection with this Martian scientist, three UFOs appear on the top of a part of the jungle in Brazil. And the entire group, the 98 scientists from Europe, were watching, like in a movie, like in an incredible, fantastic story, how the three UFOs were almost touching the ground. Only one of them touched the ground. The other two continue floating near to the land, observing. Then the door opened, opened up, and people from Mars started to come out. They were described as European people, like Swedish or Germans or Nordic people, very tall, uh, six feet plus, and very athletic. And they approached the 98 scientists from the Marconi group. There were salutations in different languages, and there were an exchange of presents to each other. Narciso Genovese, the expert in linguistic, he was the translator. And suddenly, a group of Martian scientists stayed with the Marconi group for months. For months. They were training them into building UFOs spaceships and after a few months the Marconi group was capable of creating three spaceships all this information can be found in that book I have been in Mars his author Narciso Genovese the Italian professor of linguistic in a European university so the three UFOs traveled to Mars they stopped in the moon and they continued traveling to Mars. Do you know how many, how long did it take for them to arrive to Mars? Six days. Why is it that the NASA takes six months to arrive to Mars with one of those electronic equipments to study, you know, the geography of Mars, trying to discover if there is any indication that there is life on Mars? Well, the Marconi group went there. They descended in an airport and they were connected with many, many, many habitants of Mars. Even they described their homes. People don't live in buildings the way we do. They live in houses. And they are not very tall houses. They all have a backyard where they plant their own groceries and they have a garden because they really have a lot of respect and love for nature. And technologically, they are much more advanced than we are. They are very sad about what's happening to us. But on the other side, why is it that NASA wasn't able to discover, you know, much about their civilization. 
or if they have found it, they don't want to share that information with the world for many reasons, maybe security reasons, whatever. Maybe they are afraid of being invaded, you know, by a superior civilization, more advanced technologically than we are. The point is, the Marconi group paid a visit to Mars. They spoke with Martian people and they established a relationship with them. And after so many years, 1965, to the year, this is the end of the year 2010, many things have happened, dear listeners. I leave it up to your imagination. We cannot do more than that. But on the other side, Samael Onveor, the founder of our School of Gnostic Anthropology, sent a letter to the President of the United States at that time and also to the leader of the former Soviet Union, telling them, gentlemen, stop with your exploration of space. Stop doing that, because in reality, we have done it already. Don't waste more money, more resources in a space exploration, because what you should do, you should continue doing what the Marconi Group has already done. Don't tell lies to yourselves. There is life in Mars. And also, something very important to be understood. Nobody can travel to other planets unless they have eliminated the ego, the animal psychology, the me, 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 the seven deadly sins, which are lust, anger, arrogance, envy, gluttony, laziness, and greed. Listen to my words carefully, dear audience. The seven deadly sins represent the animal psychology. Instead of lust, we should learn to practice sex with love. That's very, very important. A conscious sex, learning to be responsible in our sexual life. Instead of anger, we should eliminate the psychology of being angry because it's an animal psychology. It conducts us into hatred, which is worse. So we have to learn to be serene, peaceful, and also to be patient. We can, this is the psychology of war. What about arrogance? Instead of arrogance, we should learn to be humble. Because the only way to be wise is by learning to be humble. What about envy? Why should we be envious of the success of the others? We should learn to be content and learn from those who are more successful than we are. What about greed? Learning to be generous. What about gluttony? Instead of eating and drinking heavily, moderation. Have respect for your human organism. What about laziness? Stop being lazy, you know, fall in love with what you do. Do what you are born to be, to do with your life. So then it's being industrious. You see, this is the real human psychology. If we can eliminate the ego, we are going to be able to awaken our consciousness. We are going to be able to transform that darkness within our endocrine glands. The seven churches of the apocalypse will be illuminated. This is the path for illumination. You see, there is a strong connection between our psychology, human psychology or animal psychology, with the transformation of our organism and also to be able to travel within space to other planets. The day we eliminate wars on the face of the earth, we are going to be able to be invited by superior civilizations to visit them because we are going to be closer to them, people without ego or less ego than the actual animal psychology. The ego is the same Satan of all religions. The trouble is our psychologists and psychiatrists applaud the ego. They say the ego is okay. It's not okay. The ego is the cause of all human tragedy on earth. Poverty happens because of ego. Abuse happens because of ego. 
all political systems are a, a horrible failure on earth because of the ego. We don't know what we are doing. We are facing our own self-destruction. If we have a nuclear war or a nuclear accident, what are we doing to ourselves? Are we really intelligent? Are we or are we not? The time has come, you know, to awaken because we are facing serious, serious global catastrophes that will probably exterminate a tremendous percentage of our entire human race. Now, one more information. Do you remember the blackout of New York that lasted for 24 hours where all subways couldn't function for 24 hours or elevators in New York all you know lights traffic lights were not functioning there was a tremendous tremendous conflict and panic collective panic on the streets of New York and that affected also a few cities of Canada across the border 24 hours without light, without electricity. Do you know what caused that? We have the information, but the media inform about that immediately after that. But through the years, that information had been wiped out from the face of the earth. Why? Well, they say, again, security reasons. Well, allow me to tell you this. That night, three UFOs were flying over New York and they stopped on the, on the, in the middle of space, in the middle of the air, on the top of the high-rise buildings in New York. War planes, American war planes, came almost immediately after them. Even some of them shot, you know, some warning, warning shots. And then two of those UFOs elevated within space and disappeared in a few seconds. The third one descended into an electrical plant, into, into a hydro plant that produced the blackout of New York. Let me tell you this. The founder of the School of Nordic Anthropology, do you know what he said regarding that phenomenon? which is a true story. He said, three people, three people only, were inside of that UFO that produced the blackout of New York. But three people who are complete human beings with their organism completely illuminated, people who are conscious, real humans, not intellectual animals the way we are, and those three individuals were capable of putting millions and millions and millions of Americans and Canadians in the middle of darkness without being capable of resolving the issue before 24 hours. That means they have the power to destroy us any time they want it. Why is it that they haven't done it? Because they love us. They have respect for us. They are coming here to help us, not to attack or invade us. Remember this, only real humans, the way those people are, superior beings, and we all have the capability, the potential to become like them. These superior beings, is that capability is within ourselves. We have to learn to become like them, to grow psychologically and physically, because we are incomplete. Mother Nature gave us only a blueprint of the complete organism of a complete human being. Then we'll be able to have 12 senses instead of 5 senses. Now, why is it that NASA wasn't capable of discovering life on the surface of Mars? Sam Island Weber also has said the following. The Martian scientists deviated the cameras this very high quality, you know, and technology of those cameras. And instead of taking pictures of the surface of Mars, 
they took pictures of our own moon on the other side of our own moon. They have the power to do that. Well, this is something for us to be analyzed. Let's meditate about us. Because, if we, let's say, imagine if we go to an, another planet, and our intentions are maybe friendly, maybe not. What are we going to teach to more advanced civilization than ours? What are we going to teach? Hmm? How to create more sophisticated weapons? How to go to casinos? Prostitution? Black market? Mafias? Wars? Organized crime? Come on, let's meditate about that. Dear listeners, this is not a joke, this is not a game. Life is something very serious. So we have to accept that we are in a position that either we change, we improve ourselves, or we are going to be wiped out from the face of the earth. So let's meditate about that. Let's unite forces, let's help each other to transform in a positive manner. And don't forget that we are spiritual beings. We have a body, we have a mind, we have a soul. And as spiritual beings, let's learn the psychology of the spirit, which is the seven virtues, the real human psychology. And let's annihilate the animal psychology, the seven deadly sins, the ego, you know, our vices, our defects, our errors, our unconsciousness. So, thank you very much for listening. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is AGMG Ross. The website is rickyradio.com. So, it would be nice to hear your comments. So if you're willing to write us, you know, to our email, our email address is gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you again.